Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to a Google Hangout. I'm here with uh, some of the brilliant students who created the Johnson or NASA Johnson style video, uh, and we're just kind of having a hangout with them to talk about what that experience was like, whether they expected the popularity of the video, and um, you know what they hope to uh, what they hope to do with their lives uh, after they get through with the co-op program and, and get into the space program. So why don't we just kind of go around and everyone who's on the call uh, introduce themselves. All right, uh, I'll start. My name is Adam Nades. I'm from Plymouth Meeting, Pennsylvania. Went to school over at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. I co-opted here for four different tours at JSC. And um, my part in the video was as a mentor and a producer. Um. My name is Eric Sim. Uh, I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm studying aerospace engineering at NC State, and I recorded the song and I played Psy in the video. Hi, my name is uh, Gary Jordan. I'm currently a junior at Penn State um, University, majoring in marketing. Uh, this past fall, I co opted NASA for the first time. Uh, in the public affairs office. And my role in the video was uh, director of photography, some of the filming, and mainly editing. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ronak DeVay. Uh, I'm a senior at Purdue University, majoring in aerospace engineering. My role was, uh, and I also did some of the camera work. And I'm Brian Grant. I'm the uh, Pathways Programs and Recruiting Manager uh, at the NASA Johnson Space Center. So oversee one of our student programs uh, where all the students here with us today uh, work as a part of. And I'm Veronica Seiler. I'm in the Education Office at NASA Johnson Space Center and oversee some of the internship programs where the students um, come on board here at Johnson Space Center. Well, very good. Thank you. So when you guys were, were starting out, and I, I guess you have to do a song is it, or you have to do a video every year, was it Right away, you knew you wanted to do a music music video, and how did you decide upon Gangnam Style as, as the way to do that? So I guess I'll start off with this. Adam can add to this, but uh, this isn't really a, a mandatory thing. It's a project that was started about five years ago, 2007 uh, range, that some of the co-ops then uh, had the idea to create unique outreach videos that could reach a new audience doesn't necessarily uh, reach. <clears throat> so there's been about maybe 20 cumulative videos made. Uh, I know Adam and I last year, last fall, worked on four or five of them and the co-ops before us had made a few. Uh, and I guess after the success of the, the We're NASA and We Know It video and some of the stuff Curiosity was doing and some of the publicity on site we were getting of the good work we were doing and people were kind of more open to doing something a little more liberal and we kind of had the idea of doing a music video and uh, so that's where that kind of started. I don't know if Adam you want to add to the little bit of the history part before we talk about this one specifically. Uh, yeah so just in general the co-op video committee was created just as a way to connect with the public in a way that's meaningful to them. Um, a lot of the a, a lot of the original videos focused on TV shows or parodies and just things that the pub, the general public are interested in and are entertained by. So we kind of continued with that, and uh, we just wanted to make fun and entertaining videos to explain what NASA is doing. And uh, there was in the past there have been some very popular parody videos made. Um, we kind of shied away from doing those over the past couple of years because people said, oh, they've been done before, but I think enough time had passed and we saw a unique opportunity with the Gangnam style and we took it. Um, one of the other interns, Joyce, just had an idea and she emailed it out to everybody um, because it was just one of those songs that, you know, it was pretty much like every other song on the radio you heard was Gangnam style and it was already at like some hundred million views and it was just sort of everywhere so um, and then we started seeing like MIT do a parody we saw um, you know there was a few other ones and we thought you know we could probably 
one up these guys and show them that NASA's cool and we know what we're doing. So uh, just all the pieces sort of fell fell together from there. So. And we figured the popularity of the video, uh, it was it was a good opportunity to exploit that and sort of take and take something that was originally entertaining and somehow, I mean, I don't know if you've seen Gangnam Style, but it's sort of meaningless, like the whole dancing thing. It's, it's it got kind of random, but we we put it together in a way that was educational and people can actually get something out of it. So when you uh, when you shot the video, were there parts of it when the uh, I know you had to get the script approved, I guess. Were there parts of it that were too risque? Because there were some parts in there that were pretty fun where you had, like, you know, the astronauts involved. Anybody? I mean, we we wanted to be true to the video, but also not make it to the point where it wasn't meaningful. So most of the, sh almost 100% of the shots that we copied have some sort of educational side to the actual shot. Uh, there's very few that are just there to kind of parody the video. Uh, we didn't want to just stray off to where we were just <clears throat> where we were still parodying the video, but it didn't have any meaning. And I, I mean, you guys can add to that. That's how I saw it. I mean, yeah, obviously there are uh, some risky parts of the original video that we, you know representing government agency could not replicate 100%, but I think that we, we took our own spin off of them and made them fun and in our own way. So 4 million, uh, 4 million page views, did anyone expect that? Did you guys expect to beat 7 minutes of uh, terror? No, I, I did. I definitely <laughs> did not. Um, I mean, when we released the video, like that Friday, we had a release event here at JSC to, to, you know, show it off to Johnson Space Center first before we made it public. And uh, we, we talked to each other. We were like, yeah, you know, maybe we'll have like a thousand views come Monday or a hundred thousand or something. And come Monday, I think we had a million. So it was just, it just blew us away. And it was really, it was an exciting weekend. That's for sure. We actually cracked the YouTube uh, view algorithm. So after you hit a 300 views in a specific period of time they stop counting they, they keep counting the views but they authenticate each view because they think someone is trying to game the system so we were sitting there that night and it hadn't budged from like 312 we were like really we know more people than 300 have watched this why is this not moving and then we all did our research and now I guess we're all experts on the, the YouTube view count aggregator you had like 2,000 likes but only 300 views and we were just like <laughs> Um, I, I'm curious, uh, when some of you have gone back to your campuses after this came out, or maybe you already were on your campuses, uh, Eric or, or others, I mean, did people come up to you? Yeah, Actually, yeah, a few people. Um, some people, like, um, especially in the engineering school, like where NASA is really popular, um, and they follow NASA videos anyway, they, you know, a handful of people that knew me kind of shared it with everybody else and so like just kind of get like um, you know double takes when I'm walking in the hall and they're like not sure if it's me because I mean I wear glasses you know every day and you know I'm not wearing it in the video so it's kind of like looks kind of like me so just get a lot of double takes at school now so it's kind of funny. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the same story with everyone here but we all took the time to share with all of our friends so I know that when I went back all of my friends came up to me and we're asking about the video. Did you make it? Was that you at, at you know fifty eight seconds or wherever I popped up? But they were they were all asking questions about that, and they all loved it. They all shared it with their friends, and really that was all, what it was all about was just getting them so excited that they just wanted to tell everyone else. I was actually at a. Go ahead, Brian. We've already had our new students that are uh, starting on Monday. Several of them have been asking us about the video and how they can get involved in that. That was something to look forward to. Made them even more interested and excited about getting started to, uh, to work here as a student and to get involved in projects like that. I was actually at a, a aerospace co-op recruiting uh, informational session kind of thing yesterday. And uh, I was just hanging around after the meeting just so some of the, the freshmen could talk to me about the experience. And uh, one of them came up and was like, so 
were you there when they were making that the the video the NASA Johnson saw? I was like, yeah, I, I helped make it, and it, it was just I've been waiting for that third party thing to come full circle and have someone ask me about it. And it was really funny the way it happened. So, uh, do you guys find that generally your your fellow students back at your home institutions know what you're doing here at at, at at NASA or what Johnson Space Center is doing or, or are they not sure what NASA is doing after the shuttle? I think the general answer is, is no. I think that they don't. I think there's a very large portion of the population that correlated the end of the space shuttle with the end of NASA itself and that is as we all know very far from the truth. Uh, there's definitely a lot going on not only here at Johnson Space Center but all across the agency and uh, it's really it's frustrating to us, you know, going back and having people say, "Hey, what do you do?" You know, "Oh, I work at NASA." Oh, I'm so sorry. I heard they got canceled. Like, well, that's that's not true. So we that's that's one of the things that we pride ourselves on. One of our missions is to let people know that there's still a lot of cool things going on, a lot of awesome things coming up in the future, and that we are alive and well. So talk maybe you guys could just talk a little bit about what you have done as as these co-op students. I mean, I I would imagine it's a little more than getting coffee for people. Um, this is this past tour was my second one, and I was working in uh, propulsion systems, and uh, I was working on an in-house um, test bed called Morpheus. Um, and then my first tour, which was in the spring of this year, I was working at the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. And um, it's, it's a giant pool with a ISS mock-up in there where astronauts go in and train. And um, I just helped out with that, and it was just an awesome experience. I got to scuba dive, too. Uh, this was my first tour uh, this past fall at NASA, and, and my job in public affairs office, I, a very well-rounded experience. I got to give a lot of tours to some pretty important people, so I got to get out of the office, kind of walk around, show people, learn the history. Um, I got to talk to media, especially about all the recent events, so I was always current with what was going on at NASA Johnson Space Center, and then one of the highlights was uh, getting to talk to and communicate with astronauts. and, and uh, really getting to know them on a personal level when I was talking to them and, and giving them the opportunity to talk to the media and tell other people about what they were doing. So uh, overall, great round experience. So I've had uh, two tours in ISS operations. Um, the first being in communications and data handling where I basically worked with the flight controllers who work in mission control and helped them with the tasks that they uh, do daily and the things, the tools that they use daily and making them better and helping them out. And my second operations tour was in uh, the ISS maintenance and mechanisms group. And uh, they're basically a, a, a smorgasbord, if you will, of, of tasks that happen on station is control, are controlled by them, uh, including all the in uh, in flight maintenance uh, of the vehicle and uh, all the mechanisms that go into birthing uh, another vehicle to uh, the station. And my second tour, which was in between those two, was also in the propulsion system uh, branch. And there I worked on uh, the MMSEB, or multi-mission space exploration vehicle, and uh, I did a lot of work on creating one of the new mock-ups that's now uh, built and uh, being used for rats testing. Uh, during uh, during my tours, I did I did four of them, so I'll just go through them real quickly. Uh, I started actually as an as a intern and moved to a, a pathway intern. Uh, so I started back working on a reduced gravity simulator, uh, which is really cool. Just training astronauts to how they would work in lower gravity environments, like in space or on the moon or Mars. Uh, then I worked on the multi-mission space exploration vehicle like Ronak did. I did that twice. I mean, that's, that's pretty much a future concept for a spaceship, so that was a really fun project. Uh, and then I also worked in operations supporting the space station electrical uh, system. And uh, most recently, I co-opt in the tools and equipment branch. So we are responsible for like designing, testing, and uh, uh, space tools. 
and that's where I actually am now full time as well. So a lot of cool stuff. I would just like to say that um, a lot of times our co-ops and our students, they, they're absorbed onto the, the teams themselves and, and treated and given projects just like employees would, so they're given the real-time hands-on experiences that they wouldn't get normally. And so we're very fortunate to have a team of experts and technical experts who take the time to mentor them and to give them the responsibilities to handle these projects. Yeah, it certainly sounds like a, a pretty cool, pretty cool opportunity for, for students. Now, I, the final question is: is Did uh, did this experience change anyone's mind? Now, or do we have any budding internet celebrities here, or does everyone still want to go into space if, when they're when they're done with college? The next step is doing a video in space. There you go. <laughs> we got to stay with NASA in order to do that, and that's the only way to top, you know, this video. So. Well, guys, thank you very much. I really appreciated you taking your time today, and uh, have a great afternoon. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. Thank you.